what up, peeps? It's your girl, Dash, coming back to Frontal Takes. Well, you guys, it's that time for movie news time. I have quite a bit to discuss, quite a bit. So you know what? I'm just ready to go ahead and just dive in. I have a couple of things I'm going to discuss that have to do with a lot of the comic book characters dealing with DC and also Marvel. A couple of things in regards to some up and coming new movies that I'm hearing about that I'm very excited to discuss. A couple of them I've been talking about, we're getting a little bit more traction in it. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just dive in. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is leading into in regards to the directors of Avengers Endgame, and that is the Russo Brothers. Let's just talk about that trailer first and foremost that just came out um, at the end of this week, passing. And I'm going to tell you, I was at work. I had to wait till I got home to watch it. It was worth the wait, but I love that trailer. They are being very, not to say tight lip, but very mindful of the editing and the way they're doing these trips, especially with this one, because they don't want to give anything away. So many people who want to find Easter eggs and post videos, whichever, but I love the way it was done. I ex really enjoyed the scenes of them showcasing um, some of the characters from the past, certain little small scenes or whichever. They were very brief, but just as effective. I like the way it was mostly black and white with a little bit of color. You saw a little bit of red. Uh, of course, seeing sad parts where you can clearly tell some things have happened, you know, in regards to, of course, you know, Hawkeye, A.K. Ronan, the situation where you just feel like, you know, we know that he must love his family and he's basically out there just hunting, take no prisoners, like he just didn't care. Just the scene with him and Scarlett, which she's holding his hand, it's just so sad. I'm just not ready for some of these scenes that we're going to get. You can clearly tell the way it was edited. You know, there's a battle happens. You see Captain America. You see the scene, you know, with Nebula. I'm just so here for it. I'm here for it. I love the suits. It looks really good. So we're just counting down. What do we have? What? About five weeks till it comes out. Tickets still ain't on sale. I didn't see it, but I'm going to check. I didn't check early this morning. I need to check that because as soon as those babies go on, I know where I go to. And I know that place sells out very fast. So I'm going to jump on it quickly because I feel like I can say this. And I'm going to probably see it twice in one weekend. I just know what's going to happen. So, but moving on from that, you know, enough praising for Endgame. Now for this one with the Russo brothers, I'm excited because they're going to be working with somebody who is a part of Marvel. And that is, uh, AKA Spider-Man, AKA Tom Holland. They're going to be teaming up to do a movie together. And this movie is called Cherry. Now for this particular one, I'm going to give you a little bit of synopsis as stated for this one. Cherry tells, um, the true life story of a former Iraq war veteran army medic with severe PTSD who falls into an opioid addiction and begins robbing banks, ultimately being in prison. Now, the no novelist for this particular um, film that's going to be based off of, his name is Nico Walker. Now, actually, from what I heard, because I did a little research on him, he's actually in jail as of present day, which I've been waiting to be released. So I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. The story alone has me intrigued. I'm actually excited to see uh, Tom Holland and some other things. I don't watch enough of his movies to keep up with him. I know he has a lot of stuff planned for coming out. A few things, of course, for this this year and definitely quite a bit lined up for 2020. I know he's got the um, voiceover movie Spies in Disguise with Will Smith. I know he's working on a movie called Chaos Walking I've been hearing about and also a movie that's slated definitely for 2020 which is titled Uncharted. He has a couple other things, but those are the things that are on my radar from him. Also with the Russo brothers, if you're not mistaken, I mean, literally, I could go down the list of the different shows they've done that I like, one of them being Community, another one being Happy Endings. I used to love when the show was on. Now, I'm happy to see that the Russo brothers are definitely trying to, you know, get away a little bit from Marvel and do some other things. Because like you said, um, they've done other things in the past and then they pick up something that's, of course, considered a blockbuster or whatever. And then you feel like you just get kind of honed into that and people can't really look at other types of work really so much because they're so excited about well dad he did this movie whatever he did very well same thing with tom holland he's a young boy he's going to be around for a while so of course he's going to be very i want to say meticulous about what he picks of his choices of movies whichever and he looks like he's doing a little bit of everything you know animation comic book dramas everything so he's good to go i'm just happy to see the russo brothers definitely doing something and definitely working with him outside of marvel so this looks like it's going to be really interesting secondly i like that they're going to delve into understanding and seeing the effects of PTSD and also opioid addiction. These are things that I don't hear enough about PTSD on, in, on TV because we don't deal with enough dealing with regards to the veterans. You know, the way the news is set up right now is always, you know, kind of harbored on certain, um, 
individuals more so than anything instead of kind of more in root in with certain things that are at actually happening now with us now getting ready to deal with all these different people running for the election we're gonna probably hear a little bit more about certain things and aspects this will be nice upoid is another one that does have been getting a little bit of traction, I noticed, so I'm kind of happy about that. So, like I stated, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this. I'm also looking forward to seeing who else will be in this with Tom Holland's character. So that's going to be nice. So since it's just the beginning stages, it doesn't say anything about, of course, when they're planning to start production or anything. We haven't gotten that far yet. So as you all know, as I state to you all, when I know more, you will know more. So moving on from that, I'm going to keep a thing at the beginning of my video because it seems like a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about at the top are all about comic stuff and then I was going to parlay into some other stuff so when you see how I'm going you kind of catch on with that now this one I'm actually excited to talk about because people have been talking about it for the last since Friday news broke um, that now James Gunn has been rehired to now direct uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I'm actually excited and happy about this news. Now, we'll say this, uh, to put this out there first and foremost, we already know what happened. Of course, the name of the president, Alan Horn of Disney, they basically met with him, and it looks like he met with him a while back. It's been a couple of months that this situation and this uh, decision had been made. And we're just finding out about this. Hmm. Um, I will say this. This all came from the situation of some old tweets that Gunn had put out where some of them were in discussion about, you know, you know, pedophiles, things of that nature, just rather inappropriate. And I'm going to say this because I know a lot of people were not too happy with Gunn when the situation happened, you know, how he was, you know, of course, you know, kind of in some ways let go, whatever. Some people like Dave uh, Podista, Podista had an issue with it. And some other um, actors, you know, very well known, whichever had a problem with this, especially with what he did for doing, of course, the first Guardians of the Galaxy and all that and how it kind of brought it to um, the masses. Because a lot of people were weren't familiar with them. I wasn't familiar with them. This is my thing. I'm glad he's back. But one thing I will say is this, let this be the lesson. First and foremost, this is a lesson, not just to him, to other individuals. When you do certain things like this and go on social media and you post certain things, yeah, you can have all the freedom of speech if you want, but if you're working for a certain company or companies in general, and they have, um, a certain way about their business and how they want to be perceived when those things come out or they see these, whatever, and you're wondering why you're fired. Don't get mad at them. Be mad at the situation that you put yourself in. You can think whatever you want, but once you type it up, it's a wrap. And that's just how it is out here. You have to be very careful. I will use me as an example. I don't put nothing on here. I don't want to come back and bite me in my tail. And furthermore, I don't put anything that's just straight foolery and nonsense that would put me in a position or make myself or put myself in a situation to have to have a discussion in a room behind closed doors with the powers that be. That would never happen. There's nothing in the world that I feel so strongly that I would have to literally put it out there, whichever. Yeah, I can speak my truths and all I want, whatever. But it's, you have to be mindful of that because people out here screenshot you with the quickness and will definitely throw that in your face down the road. They might not do it. And there's some sinister people, whatever. They don't particularly like you. They will find that stuff, expose you, whatever, and make sure certain people see it gets retweeted whatever if it be on your twitter your ig your facebook whatever we don't live in a day and age 20 years ago where you did certain things you don't have to worry about it popping back up we're now in a totally different age where technology social media is prevalent and you have to be mindful of that so but moving on from that now needless for that I'm actually happy I'm looking forward to that now this also brings up the fact that of course you all know he's doing suicide squad the next installment some people say he's considering this kind of like to be some sort of a reboot of sorts whatever not not even to be where it's going to kind of be um a sequel of sorts to the last one i really don't care i'm actually excited the fact that they're finally going to do it i actually enjoyed the first one i'm down for it so it looks like um from what they're stating suicide squad is not to come out until around summertime of 2021 so he has some time Secondly, the way they had it set up, if I'm not mistaken, with um, Guardians, and, uh, Guard Guardians of the Galaxy, excuse me, it was supposed to be somewhere closer to the beginning of a phase four, whichever. But now that um, this has happened, it's going to get pushed back. So instead of it being at the beginning to kind of somewhat help move that phase four, it's going to be towards the end of phase four now. Because we're dealing with the movies that we're starting to get some traction now, which is on the Eternals, and also getting definitely more information about Black Widow and some other things down the pike as we move forward which I'm actually glad about. So definitely it's going to be happening. You know, some people are probably bombing out the way, but it is what it is. Marvel has many things lined up 
And at the rate we're going, whichever will be fine. Of course, we're going to eventually get our Black Panther 2. We're going to definitely get, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the darn movie. Um, <clears throat> but needless to say, I'll post a poster somewhere up here where my mind just went totally blank. But there's so many other movies that we have to worry about. You have Spider-Man coming out soon. We have, you know, of course, Avengers. I'm not worried about that. And there's some other things on the pike I'm going to discuss after this as well. So I'm excited that he is back. I know a lot of people definitely are happy. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing him do his thing for both. I mean, it's going to be something. I'm just like, he working DZ, and he working tomorrow? Hey, get that money. And he's a producer on the movie Brightburn. Have you seen that trailer? The thing looks so freaking good. I'm just like, gun, yes. Just do your thing, buddy. I'm here to see what you're going to put, put out there for the masses. You know, just, hey. I, I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So, but moving on from that. Now, one of them I wanted to talk about as well, and that has to do with um, I was speaking on since I was already talking about DC is the Batman movie. Now, I'd already discussed how I'm still wanting to know more a little bit of information about who's going to be cast. We already know that Ben Affleck will not be attached to it. Not too happy about that, but it is what it is. It's time to just move on from that. Now, of course, I'd already discussed it. They're claiming filming will start towards the end of the year. I'd already stated this, so this is not really brand new information. They were claiming that... Um, it will most likely be November. They're saying if he doesn't start in November, then it will be moved to January. I'm hoping it's at the end of this year. We have a long way to go. Let me get the date. The date of this is June 25th, 2021. So we have well over, really have two whole years. This is plenty of time. So that means Batman does not have to be rushed. It gives him ample time to get it right since we're getting our standalone movie. Now, I'm hearing, these are the two things that I'm hearing that I really want to kind of harp on. First of all, I'm hearing rumors that um, Army Hammer is being considered or is probably being looked at as possibly playing the character. And when I say this, because the way they're casting is they're stating that they want somebody who's at least 15 to 20 years younger than, say, Ben Affleck. Because when they do this, we should already know, and I, I'm not talking about anything you all are not privy to understanding. The whole point of that age bracket is because they want this person to be in multiple um, standalone films for this particular uh, Batman franchise. And I figured that was it. I figured if they're doing this, they want to make sure that this person is signed on to do either two or three. I have more for C3. Because when I think about that, let's just use a perfect analogy. Christian Bale, when he did The Dark Knight, we already know they're going to want to do three. And whoever signs up to do this is going to be signing on to know they're going to have to do three of these. There's no way of getting out of this at all unless, God forbid, this person does something you know, along the lines, similar to how things panned out with Affleck and he has a step down, whatever. He was going to still be a part of some capacity, but now he's completely out of that. Now, Army Hammer, I don't know. When I think about, um, well, I'm thinking about overall, okay, got the height, bulk up a little bit, not as brooding because most of the Batmans that we had over the years have been more, you know, tall, dark, you know, with the darker hair, whatever. Now, granted, Val Kilmer, the time, he kind of like the lighter shade of whatever, you know, aesthetic, whatever, fine. I just, mm, I don't know how I feel about him being it. I just don't know. Uh, it's just not doing nothing for me. I'm going to be honest with you. If they kept um, Batman closer to the age bracket, I was still down for John Hamm doing it. I so see it. But I don't know. I need to see him in a costume, like really look at him up and down and see it. I would literally be giving side eye the whole time. Just like that, like. I need to see it. <laughs> so I'm just being honest, but we'll see whichever, but that lets us know they're finally going to start probably eventually casting sometime over the summer. And I'm glad because we need to get this ball rolling. We were planning to start this in November. Let's get this out. I know this, the script is now finally finalized. They're done with this. So basically I figured they want a younger version and it's fine. That is fine because I think Ben is what, 48, 49 years old. So yeah, they want something along the lines of early thirties. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. And if they want the age bracket, because they're going to have to do these closer, closer together as well. Maybe the first one, and then two years later, the second one, and two years later. So this person should be ready for like the next, you know, four to five years of being attached to this. And then when he's not doing this, what other moves you're going to do? Knock yourself out. But just know that you are definitely going to be attached and obligated to knock these babies out. Aesthetics, those action sequences better be on point because I already know how I feel about those. So. That's just how I am about that. It is what it is. But 
I just want some more information. Let's just get down to this casting because I'm ready to see who they're going to have. I want to see the options. I want to see if we're going to have three or four or five people who they're considering or whatever. They might keep a tight lip, but I'm hoping they don't. So we can all see who they're choosing and so they can get some sort of, you know, feedback from us, seeing how we feel about it, whatever and all that, and kind of taking some of that into consideration instead of just picking somebody and when people see it. But let me shut my mouth because we saw how they did Ben Affleck at first. But then as soon as that one scene I said that happened in the warehouse came out, when it was one of those TV spots, people like literally like, was salivating. I was one of them because I liked it and I thought it was done very well. So I was here for it. So that's why I'm still salty <laughs> about him not being in this movie. I am. I'm really salty about that because I thought he was perfect. So, but anyway, moving on. Now, another movie. I'm looking forward to it. That's comic book led. That's finally getting some more traction now for sure. Cause we now have a director and this is a part of Marvel. Like I said, we're getting some other movies in Marvel. So it's not all going to be just about us wondering when guardians of the galaxy three is coming out, whichever I'd already talked about the Eternals a week ago. And of course, black widow as well. This has to do with, uh, Shang Chi. Now this movie I'm looking forward to because this is going to be basically dealing with the masters of Kung Fu. And I'm just excited. Now the director who's finally come on board, his name is Destin Daniel Cretton. Now I'm excited for him. This is kind of like, he's kind of gives me a vibe because he's kind of like an indie director. So I'm kind of hyped for this. We get our Asian director and we're definitely have an Asian um, actor playing at this. So I'm happy that we're getting more information and what's happening on this movie. I talked about this. I want to say probably three, maybe three, four months ago, whatever I brought up briefly, whichever. And I was kind of happy, you know, that we're getting something totally different, even though it's comic book led, whatever, but a little bit different, you know, in regards to what kind of storyline to discuss, whichever. So this is just something I'm definitely going to look forward to seeing. Now, one thing I can say with Marvel, they try to be totally different with the, the different directors that they get. Like I said, Destin is definitely different. One also, he's worked in other movies, um, with a couple of Marvel people. I don't know if you're familiar. He's definitely worked with Brie Larson and some other stuff, you know, from the past. Let me give you some names, some movies like The Glass House. And also, he just finished actually wrapping up this movie, which I'm looking forward to. It's coming out this fall, and it's titled Just Mercy. It'll be with Brie Larson and, of course, Michael B. Jordan. So I'm actually happy to see this movie. I'm looking forward to getting it trailer, hopefully over this midsummer, in the summer, since it's coming out. I think they said November if I'm not mistaken. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, when I talk about Marvel always trying to branch out with the directors that he get, they always like to do like any type of um, directors. You know, of course, James Gunn being one of them, as you've seen. We also have the Russo brothers. I told you everything wasn't always about comic book, whichever led. John Favreau, we got him. We also have Ryan Coogler. These are just to name a few of these indie type of um, directors, you know, who never would ever would probably think would be into doing um directing in a, some sort of comic book character at all so i like that they like to mix it up you know keep you know keep people guessing especially if you're somebody who likes to watch a lot of different directors and their work and kind of see what kind of movies they pick whichever and i think as a movie person that's actually a good thing you want to see different directors doing different things and just know that they can you know do that. See, this is a particular genre that Destin is definitely not familiar in. So he basically is going to have to find a way to bring those fighting um, scenes in regards to um, the master of Kung Fu come to life when he does this um, particular movie. Since this is not a known genre he's actually familiar with doing, he's definitely known for doing the drama. So this is definitely something that's uncharted territory for him, but I feel like he has it in him with some of the other work he's done in the past that I can foresee it's going to be a good, good movie. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this. I'm not sure if I stated who the um, actor is actually attached to this as well as now him being the director, but I feel like as time goes on, we're going to get more information about the casting. So I'll just discuss that a little bit more in detail as it comes out, whichever. But I'm happy to know that this is now. We still don't know when production starts. They did not discuss that as of yet, but that is fine. That is us know that we're finally getting some more movement in this movie. And since I talked about a couple months ago, it lets me know they're kind of moving full steam ahead like they are with Black Widow and now also with some new casting for the Eternal. So. And that's right. Just bring it on. I just love it. Marvel definitely is keeping me guessing. I'm loving what I'm seeing with them and what they're doing and all the stuff they're mixing up, whichever. So this is one that I definitely want to talk about <laughs> because some individuals are, not, are truly are not feeling the actual person who's actually playing this character. But then for me, I want to give the, um, this person the benefit they can probably do justice to this, even though in the movie, Justice Lee, he didn't get... Um, Sometimes a scene stealer, but didn't get a lot, you know, attraction in parts in certain scenes for himself. It was mostly the other characters. And I'm talking about The Flash. This has to do with um, um, Ezra Miller playing Barry Allen. 
Now, when, like I said, we remember we saw him briefly in Batman vs. Superman. When we saw at the end, of course, you see the scene. Um, of course, Diane, a.k.a. Wonder Woman, looking at the video that she was sent, whichever, of course, by Ben Affleck's character playing Batman, talking about his issue, whenever you saw scenes of Aquaman. Of course, you saw a scene of him and, you know, in a little you know, convenience store or whatever. And, of course, we got really introduced to him a little bit better in Justice League with him, of course, you know, visiting his father in jail, whichever. And, of course, Batman visiting him, Bruce you know and wanting him to work with him you know putting together this team whichever of course with aquaman wonder woman superman you know all that nature now for him it's looking like um the powers that be uh dc and wb are wanting to make some changes with um the movie and edra still is attached it's coming up that he's being attached all the way up until may because it looks like the two people that they were going to bring on and let me get their names john francis daly and jonathan goldstein these two individuals are basically being bring on because for some reason it looks like they're trying to figure out how they want to bring the flash out to the masses to continue further on in regards to the future of what they can do for the flash if they decide to make a sequel and they want to do with more like a light-hearted type of um script ezra on the other hand, with like a more darker script. Now he's asked a particular writer to help him, which his name is Grant Morrison. And it looks like Grant, yeah, he wants to work on a more darker type of storyline. Now, let's just say, I know they're kind of, you know, thinking, mm, you know, he's trying to put forth the effort to do this. And it's a possibility, depending on what the script looks like, they consider it. Now, they're on a time crunch. DC seems to be full throttle with all the different things they're working on right you all know they're dealing of course with birds of prey of course you see what's happening with matt reeves with batman you know joker already finished wrapping up so that's coming out later this year you know we have all these other different things that are going to be coming out definitely next year in 2020 we now of course know that you know, we're going to get our aquaman too you know it's just you know they have all these things kind of lined up we're doing morbius so they have a timetable and it seems like he's only getting a certain amount of time i think they said another week or two whichever a couple weeks you know he's going to of course you know present some sort of script to see if they like it whichever because honestly if it's coming up um his time to be attached to this movie is going to come up i think come up in may we already see what happened with Ben Affleck. We see what's happening with Henry Cavill coming as Superman. It just seems like, you know, <laughs> it's almost like a done deal. Like they would rather just um, recast Barry Allen and just go with the lighthearted, whichever, and then, you know, move it. Because not to say, I'm really intrigued at the point that he wants it to be darker. I don't know why he feels this need for it to be that way. Now, Grant, I can see aspects of it being darker in terms of what happened with his dad, how those particular scenes, but it doesn't have to be darker throughout the whole show. I mean, movie, excuse me, now with the show, I can use them as a good um, segue, whichever. You know, you get the lighthearted with it, but they definitely have where it seems to be even kill, you know, lighthearted, but then definitely some darker tones, especially with that. So I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm curious to see since the powers that be are giving him the opportunity to write it and they're going to check it out and see what they think because in the end it's all based on what they think. Now, granted, they're stating if they end up going with the other two gentlemen who want the lot of heart, you know, you know, type of storyline, will he stay on and actually work with them? If not, that means they will definitely be recasting. So I'm curious to see how that's going to pan out. That That's very interesting to me to see that he's really feels very strongly about this, you know, and he's invested time in the movie by playing this character. So I can see some individuals when they do movies, they get very you know, you know, strong feelings about which I'm and all that because they play the, the role. I wouldn't be the past and you know, say, for instance, other people like, you know, even though they can move on, whichever and all, but you have a soft spot for it because, you know, the time and work and effort you put into it, I could be like Iron Man, you know, Captain America, you know, Wonder Woman, things of this nature, whichever you feel a strong bond, whichever you brought it to life, you know, you gave it um, a certain, you know, feeling the same for instance with even with Aquaman. A lot of people wanted to doubt it for so long, whichever. And then Jason Momoa came over and took over and all that, you know, gave it some, this life, whichever, and it took on a whole life of itself and it made over a billion dollars. And here we are, you know, so you never know. That would be great if he's able to do that. But you know, for feel like he has enough, you know, power, you know, to make to get them to make that decision, whatever and all that, that's some good kahunos on his part, whichever, because that wasn't gonna work with Cavill or Ben Affleck and, you know, in regards to whatever they were planning to do. But we know how that stuff happened with Affleck. I'm still not understanding how the hell it happened with Cavill because it's not like he had any real pull on that. He still was I figured under contract for his character for Superman to get one more movie out of there because I wanted my man of steel too, but that's a rant that I could have in one video by itself, so I'm not going to go there. So I'm going to keep uh, my eyes on this. They said it's supposed to be um, 
basically a late production starting in late 2019. I'd like to know how that is, but that's the timetable they had set for that. So we'll have to see how that pans out. So like I said, by May, we'll know how this goes. And maybe in a couple weeks and going into May, we'll know for certain if he has now stepped down and chose not to do it because they didn't want to do his script. So, you know, fingers crossed for you, Ezra. Hopefully that works. That'll be nice. So now this one right here, I wasn't sure I wanted to talk about it, but I said, let me just bring this up because somebody might have some two cents to add to this as well. And this is nothing that I'm excited about whatever. And then hearing the added information that came out about it makes me just none too happy about this. This definitely has to do with the Gambit movie, but this has to do with another movie that played a part in why the Gambit movie is not happening. And this has to do with supposedly Fantastic Four being the reason why Gambit did not get off, you know, off his first leg. Now, this is a movie I haven't talked about really since early last year. I was excited. I'm hyped for it, whichever. Channing Tatum was attached to it. So I was like, okay, great. I'd like to see what he's going to do with this particular, you know, character. Now, this was something, this has been discussion going back to 2014. Now, it started picking up extra traction back in 2016 around a time that Fantastic Four, the new rebooted one that starred like Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, things of that nature. Now, of course, you know, they had already set up, you had the budget ready to go for, you know, what they were planning to do for the Gambit once this movie came out, which was Fantastic Four. Since Fantastic Four bombed at the, the theaters, and I will say, I know it did. I saw it. I did not like it. Let me just put it like this. I still like the first one. <laughs> Before they did the sequel, and that was the one starring Chris Evans. I like that one better. And it's going to still hold until this day, until they finally get the right combination for script and cast. Because that one right there, the way they did the trailer, it was very elusive and all that, but it didn't have me intrigued. But when I saw that movie, it was horrible. I'm sorry. And I see why it tanked. I think that the budget was somewhere around 150, 160, and I think it only made like less than 200. I know I'm surprised. So due to the fact that they did not do very well, that caused them to decrease the budget for them to be able to push forward Gamba, and that's kind of what happened. Now, basically, it's just been an end of development ever since that situation happened with Fantastic Four. So I've already talked to you all about how so many different directors have been attached to this. I think, um, what is it, um, Gore Verbin Verbinski. Then we had another one. His name was a Rupert Wyatt. He actually was on board at one time as well. Then we started hearing talks that I talked about a couple months ago, how at the point where Channing Tatum was probably most likely getting frustrated, he's like, damn it, I'll direct it. You know, let's just get his ball. And I'm thinking... I don't know if we want to go that far. You know, you haven't directed nothing ever, and I don't know how that's going to work. You know, I'd rather him just stick to the character or whatever, just find, you know, a more reputable director. But, you know, sometimes, you know, things call for this. I'm going to read something that was said by uh, Rupert Wyatt in regards to this movie, whichever they had talked about and when it was getting itching near to actually doing a movie. He says, this, I was very close with Chang Tatum and his producing partner, Reed Caroline, and I was on the script with him and Josh uh, Zutumer as the writer. He says, we were close, I believe, and 10 weeks away, it was simply came down to the budget. He says, there was not enough. You know all too well about the politics of the business. He says, Fantastic Four had been released by Fox a month before and had not gone well for them. So our budget was slashed quite considerably. The inevitable from my perspective was, well, then we need to rewrite the script to tailor to our budget. Mm -mm. But we were too close to have started for Fox to really want to go there. So unfortunately, it just didn't work out. So you see how he just said that? He said they slashed the budget. They were going to change the overall storytelling script, whatever, just to parlay to the budget. Nobody wants them to do that. That takes away from whatever they need to make the scenes, you know, work very well, whatever, being the action parts, whichever. That's unfortunate that would have had to happen. But, you know, this is what happened. So I know a lot of people have been talking lately. I've been hearing where they're looking forward to definitely getting their hands on doing Fantastic Four and definitely doing Silver Surfer. I would love to see that. That would be great. You know, with the different transitions happening, you know, Disney and these merges, whatever and all that. I'm just looking forward to seeing who's going to end up, you know, dealing in the capacity of these certain particular movies that a lot of people have been wanting and waiting for. A lot of people definitely want a new Fantastic Four. But like I said, it really is going to come down to who are they going to cast to do this? Are these going to be no names or, you know, how? And then how is that dead on storyline? Because I know if they're going to do Fantastic Four, they're going to want to do more than one. Years ago, when the ones that came out back in the early 2000s, it was what? We had the two, and then, of course, this one, of course, came about, what, 2015? So I don't know. I, I'm just curious to see how this is going to all work out. I'm still trying to have a glimmer of hope for Gambit. 
I really would like to see that movie. That would be nice. I know Channing Lula, he's trying his best to hold on because from what Rupert White also said was he had a lot of good ideas for what they could do for that character. Probably into the point where Gambit, if it did very well, there's a possibility they could do a sequel for that. So right now, it just seems like it's up in arms, whichever just don't know what's happening, but I just had to say this part because I said that now it does make a little bit of sense, whichever, because if they're a part of the same, you know, film, you know, movie, you know, production company, whichever and all that, they're not going to flip a, flip a bill to put the money out thinking that this next one, if it was a part, if it was going to be the secondary one right after Fantastic Four to come out, they're not going to even think, no, we're not putting no money in this one. Cause if this one did this, this one might do the same thing. So I'm not even surprised by that. So, but just bummed about this. So hopefully, I'm going to have to keep my eyes on this one because this has been coming a lot lately about Gambit. So I'm hoping with the more talk about it, a lot of people start kind of hearing about it. It gets enough whispers and all that, that they might give it another look, see whichever. And then hopefully before the end of this year, we might hear a little bit more information about it. So, but moving on from that, that's enough of the comic book discussions right now. I'm going to move on to some other things. This pertains to something that's going to be coming out uh, through Netflix. And this has to do with a person who already works for Netflix doing um, a show um, for them that's been doing very well for the last couple of years. I'm looking forward to the new season. I think that's season three coming out. And this has to do with Millie Bobby Brown. She will be in a new a movie for Netflix and it's titled The Thing About Jellyfish. I'm excited. Producing on this with her will be Reese Witherspoon. Love her. So let me kind of just read a little bit of the synopsis. This has to do, based off of a novel, it just centers on a seventh grader named Susie Swanson, a girl who believes that her best friend's death was caused by a jellyfish. It says the narrative is based on an adolescent conflict coping mechanisms and an imagination, of course, as you all know, jellyfish, whichever. As a protagonist constructs a world in which jellyfish, jellyfish experts excuse me, can lead her to the truth. Thought it was a little different. This is a little different. And I love this because this was based off, like I said, a novel by a female named um, Allie Benjamin. She is a Massachusetts native and she graduated you know, from Grinnell College. So this is one of her first um, novels. Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing Millie Bobby Brown, you know, branch out, of course, in more things. We came to know her from Stranger Things. She did a great thing playing, you know, um, 11. I'm looking forward to her. She also is going to be in Godzilla King of Monsters and also in Godzilla versus King Kong. So the girl's busy. I know she's probably so happy to be in other things. Once she blew up with Stranger Things, it was just like, you can't do the show forever. You got to start doing some other things and to snatch up these that movie. That was good on her part. Kudos to her, her, her agency. So I'm actually excited for her in this. Now the director for this is her name is, and let me get this correctly, Wanderee Caillou. She's a Kenyan filmmaker. Now she has one movie that came out that was actually a part of, I want to say, um, the Can 2018's Can Film Festival, and it was called Rafiki. It was actually banned in Kenya, but then it was the ban was lifted for like seven days, and it actually got um, some traction and became eligible for the Academy Awards. So she's just an up and coming director who's got a little bit of body of work. I'm actually excited to see um, her being attached to this. It has me very intrigued. Uh, this is something I will definitely keep my eyes out for this. Like I said, I do like some of the work so far that I'm seeing that Millie Brown, Barry Brown is actually attached to. So like I said, Netflix is definitely known for definitely putting out, of course, good TV shows, you know, they yank some, but definitely good TV shows and also some good movies. So this one will definitely be on my radar. I'm looking forward to seeing the trailer for this. I want to see how this pans out and how she plays this character. But just wanted to kind of bring this one out to you guys just to kind of see how you all feel. I don't know if you all watch Stranger Things. It is a good show. I love the nostalgics of the 80s. I, like, I love how people, even though I find it just kind of not to say a little funny at times, but people are like, oh, this, that, that, you know, that's kind of, you know, similar to how the Stranger Things. I said, Stranger Things took from stuff from the 80s. So it's like, no, Stranger Things didn't start nothing new. That's the 80s that started that that bad boy. So, but I love that they give kudos to that because at least they show that whichever. So, but yeah, so I just had to go there real quick with that. But yes, if you all don't watch that, you definitely need to watch that. I'm just looking forward to the new season. So, but moving on now, this one, definitely looking forward to it because this entails stuff all encompassed with Stephen King. And this has to do with the novel called The Talesman. Now I talked about this, I want to say late fall, whatever, and I hadn't heard anything as of lately. But we're finally kind of getting a little bit of information. We're finally getting a director. So we get to move this along. The director for this, it will be Mike 
Barker. Now I'm excited for him because actually he is attached to doing um, directing for the show The Handmaid's Tale. So if you all watch it, I don't watch it enough, but that is a good show. So I definitely feel very good about him coming on board to do this. Now this is a novel that was done with Stephen Stephen King, excuse me, and um, the other uh, Peter Straubs. They both wrote this novel. Now this takes away from the fact that you all are used to them dealing in mostly Stephen King dealing in horror. You know. And thrillers of sorts in his novels, but this being more like a dark fantasy, similar to you remember if you all recall the novel he did, which had to do with Dark Tower. That was the one that starred Idris Elba and uh, Matthew McConaughey. So I'm actually glad that we're getting this movie um, made out of the one of his novels. It's a little bit different than the norm. They're already doing very well with his um, movie It. The first one that came out a couple years ago, which was really good. It too will be coming out in October, you know, September, excuse me. I'm looking forward to that. And of course, we have it coming out, what is it, in April, um, Pet Cemetery. So, yes. Yeah, so, we don't have enough of Stephen King. Just, just love me some Stephen King. So, I'm excited to see this. I'm looking forward to this now. Let me just kind of read the synopsis. And some people don't familiar with the book, whatever. It's about a 12 year old boy named Jack Sawyer who, hoping to save his cancer stricken mother, goes on a journey to find a mysterious tal tal was a talisman, excuse me, but finds himself being pursued by denizens of a parallel world called the Territories. So this is one novel I did not read, so I'm not familiar with this, so I'm just looking forward to learning a little bit more as I go. Also, I'm looking forward to seeing that lovely trailer about this particular one and just kind of seeing who's going to play the lead character, of course, you know, who's going to be the young boy. Haven't heard anything about the casting as of yet. It's, so far, it's just the director, so let me know. They're definitely starting um, movement on getting this movie um, set up to start production and get it filmed, and this is a good start. Um, Mike Barker being attached yeah that that's that's a, a good one right there that just lets me know i need to really start watching him and tale again I, i'm so far behind so but yes i just wanted to bring this one up like i said um i don't know how many of you all already i'm ready for it too not too sure if i'm still ready to see pest i already told you all the first one still um holds up very well for me but um i didn't watch the second trailer they did for it because i said they i heard they tweaked a little bit something in the movie so it's a little different from the original one that came out over 30 years ago so that has me intrigued to see it now but again i still love the first one it was done very well the second one mm, but it is what it is so moving on from that you guys now this is one movie i have been talking about off and on for the last couple of weeks as information comes out i just love to talk about it because it's one of those type of franchises that i love um since i've been watching since i was really a teen and that is of course james bond now with this particular little bit of information i want to bring up because it just gets me even hype for it because i know they're going to put forth effort to make sure the last and final one darren craig's attached to is on par and i'm excited now this has to do with them working on a massive action sequence that will be happening in southern um italy and i'm excited now italy has been known to be in other movies that they've done they used um some scenes in uh quantum of solace and they also they had some scenes in spectra i recall that because if you look at the scenery you know how italy looks you can catch it i know they have done some movies from in the past for um James Bond for back in the day, some of them from the 60s movies, and I think a few of them from the 70s movies, but the ones most recently, those are the ones I definitely remember very uh, vividly, so, but I'm looking forward to it. Now, also, I don't know if this action sequence will have anything to do with Rami Malek, but I do hear that he definitely, of course, looks like he's going to be coming on board to be the villain now. Also, with him working on the last and final season of The Robot, he will be tweaking his schedule. So he's able to do both. So I'm actually happy about that. He's not going to pass up the idea of being a part of the Bond thing. He ain't, he ain't stupid. So we knew he was going to make that work. He was going to find a way. <laughs> Having a little bit of prowess. Now he got the Oscar and had probably worked some magic to get that done. So I'm looking forward to seeing him as a villain. There's no movie he's been in as of yet that I've seen where he plays a villain. So that's the part that has me intrigued about him. And I want to see if he can, if, if he's able to pull it off because he's always playing a guy who's, you know, a similarity of being a good guy or whatever and all that, or being a guy who's always in a you know bad situation trying to find his way out of it, you know, or is trying to save a person, whichever, or just, you know, nothing totally on the villain aspect. So this is definitely something I'm looking forward to seeing him do. And I'm really hoping he knocks it out the park for himself, whichever we already know who Daniel Craig is going to bring to the table. So 
it's got to be good. Please be good. Of course, I told you all the title of this is stating for this James Bond movie called Shatterhand. Love the, the name of that. Definitely, definitely looking forward to any action sequences. I wonder if this will be one that's at the beginning. Normally, he has a couple of them that always happen towards the beginning. You know, some type of chase scene or whatever. Definitely the car scenes or whichever. So... I know it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. So if you already know this got pushed back because it's supposed to come out um, February, but now it's going to be April of 2020, but that's fine. Just a couple months later, whichever gives them the extra time, you know, to get it done. So they've already getting ready to start production. So they have like a full, honestly, really a full year just about. So when they go through whatever they need to do, editing, whatever, they can get this baby like up and on par and ready to roll so just want to show my love to james bond i love me some james bond you can't do no wrong this is one of my favorite franchises to follow so but moving on for that now this is some new information for a new movie coming out and i'm looking forward to this movie where we're finally getting some um, information about who's going to be a cast and this is something that's going to be starring denzel washington i am a fan of denzel been a fan of him really since saint elsewhere but I'll tell you, the first movie I saw of his, um, gosh, what was it called? I might put the picture up in here because I just thought of, um, I think it was called Heart Condition. And I really enjoyed it. That was the first movie I really saw him in after watching him on St. Elsewhere or whatever. But needless to say, this is going to be, of course, a thriller. And it's called Little Things. Now, let me give you a little bit of the synopsis. You know, I got to kind of let you in. He's going to be one of two leads in this particular movie. And it states in this one, it says... Um, he will be playing, I want to say, DK, D E K K E, DK, a deputy sheriff in California's Kern County. It's described as a man who's talented as a lawman that's nonetheless become a bit burnt out on the job. It says he will team up with a Los Angeles detective named Baxter in order to locate and capture a serial killer. So, that, that sounds really interesting to me. I'm looking forward to that. Also, the director on this is John Lee Hancock. I'm looking forward to seeing him team up with him. He's actually worked on movies like um, Saving uh, Mr. Banks and also what is the movie? Uh, the Founder. I remember that one. Both of them, actually, but The Founder for sure. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I know he's worked with movies like remember Saving Mr. Banks. That was uh, Tom Hanks. And he also has worked with, um, I want to say, uh, Sandra Bullock. So him working with some very high profile you know, actors, probably nothing to um, Hancock. That looks like it's going to be very interesting. I'm excited because him playing, of course, um, another sheriff, detective, something of a lawman. Again, you all remember him in training day, just ferocious, <laughs> that, you know, you know, disgusting type of narcotics, you know, cop, you know, officer, just, oh, he took it to a whole other level. Now, with this one, him being more of a, um officer where he's on the right side, you know, of the law, whichever, of course, if you remember movies he's done. We did the movie like The Bone Collector. Love that movie. Also, the movie Fallen. Do any of y'all remember the movie? Um, what was it? Virtuosity. I remember that movie. God, I remember that. I haven't seen that in years. I think that movie had him and I think Russell Crowe. Back when I didn't know who Russell Crowe was, and that was one of those first movies. He was just so like straight to me, bonkers the way he carried himself in the movie. But yes. So, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this. Like I said, we don't know who else has been cast yet. It's just he's the first part of the lead. With this, he was the second lead. And I'm curious to know who's going to definitely be playing the serial killer of sorts that you have to find you know who's you know out here doing what they're doing i'm looking forward to seeing who that's going to be don't have any information about exactly when the movie is slated to come out they haven't gotten that far but you all know that will be far behind once we know who else will be attached they'll most likely put some more information out that but this is definitely one i will be seeing i love a good thriller of sorts you know suspense thrill of sorts so i'm gonna keep my eyes on this one again the movie is titled little things you already know denzel brings it you know when he's attached to anything so i'm looking forward to seeing how he's going to grasp this particular character whichever and all that but the part of him being an officer that part is down pat he's going to see how this character's personality runs and how he meshes with whoever he's going to be his sidekick in the movie so but moving on from that another thing i'm looking forward to that's coming out soon is the movie Charlie's Angels reboot. Now, I talked about this months ago, how they changed the date of this coming out. This will be coming out in November of later this year. Some dates is switched around with some other movies or whichever for that, and that is fine. Now, the cast on this one, the name is, what is it, um, Ella Valeska. We have Naomi Scott, and we also have Kristen Stewart. Now, wasn't sure how I felt about the mixture, because to be honest with you, at first, and I'm not going to lie, Kristen Stewart being attached, I was just like, mm, I've not seen her really anything actual. She does a lot of um, independent films, indie films. She does a lot of, you know, the, definitely the drama, whichever. Not familiar with her and doing action sequences, whichever. So, seeing she's going to have to be kicking some butt, doing something in this movie, I'm 
looking forward to is they kept this baby totally under wraps. So you didn't get to see anything. You saw maybe a picture of her, of course, her shirt cut, whatever, whatever she's dressed in, but nothing else. Now, the director on this, as you all recall, I stated is Elizabeth Banks. I'm excited for her. I love when she directs stuff, whichever. Now, this won't be different for Naomi Scott B that they work together on the Power Rangers, but I'm looking forward to seeing that they're working together. Secondly, with Naomi Scott, she's a busy girl as well. Of course, from Power Rangers, she's also worked on uh, the movie that's going to be coming out this summer, and that is Aladdin. She'll be playing Princess Jasmine. I know she saw some other things kind of lined up. Now, Ella Belinska, I'm not familiar with her as well, so I'm going to kind of get used to seeing her and what she's doing. Um, from there but she did ella post a picture from um i think her instagram page whichever kind of showing the girls and all like all black like look like you know she just could have been in all black had some shades on whichever and i'm feeling that they were might have been just about wrapping up whichever on the film so we're getting close to hopefully seeing something very soon from the girls for the movie um i will say this i definitely love the tv show i was young when it came out I remember it came out at the early, like mid 6, 70, excuse me, 76, 77. And then it went on until like the early 80s. And I remember I was a little kid when I saw it. I remember Farrah Fawcett with the feathered hair, whichever. And then, of course, here we are all back in the 2000s, early 2000s, when we came out with the Charlie's Angels um, movie, which starred Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy um, Lucy Liu. Loved them. I love when they did it. I love when they did the uh, sequel to it, you know, Charlie's Angels, you know, full throttle. And, of course, we got to see Demi Moore do her thing. So I'm just looking forward to seeing how this reboot is going to be that trailer is going to have to sell it because i'm gonna tell you a lot of us did enjoy the movies with the other ladies so i'm looking forward to seeing it and i'm gonna tell you like this no offense to her because i do like kristen stewart but she better bring it because a lot of people are not probably thinking okay you did another franchise which was you know the twilight series so you come into charlie's angels are you going to be doing more than one and most likely probably depending on how good this one does so if she can you know bring to the table with some sort of good fighting scenes whichever i know naomi scott will so i'm looking forward to seeing what Kristen and ella can bring and i'm just ready to see it so i can decide you know if this is going to be something i really want to go and support at the theater no need to sugarcoat it if i don't like that trailer i ain't going so I just had to put that out. And just to let you all know, I said November is November 1st of this year. So that's when the movie will be coming out. So, all right, ladies, let's get to it. So now this is another um, movie I want to see. And I'm wanting to know what's going to happen with this. And that has to do with Red Sonja. Now, I remember the first one. You remember Bridget Nielsen was in it. I loved it. It was it was funny. It didn't do very well at the theaters, but it has a cult classic, kind of cult following a source. Some people do um, like it. And a lot of people love more of the comic uh, novels of it more so than this, you know, she's honestly, to me, Red Sonia, she gives off a vibe of being a very complicated warrior of types. So I'm not surprised, you know, in that aspect, when you see it, you know, from the aspect of the actual, um, comic part now for the movie, the way they show shadowed or showcased her in the movie, not so, so, so much. And I know also, if you all recall, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it. Cause of course, at the time, you know, he was the character in Neil Conan. I really want this to happen now. We remember hearing that Brian uh, Singer was attached, but I'm getting word that he's not um, probably still attached to it anymore. I don't know if that's still true. Um, they're claiming, and if I'm going to say, let me get the person's name correctly, he is the CEO of Millennium Films, and his name is um, A.B. Lerner, has, I think, recently stated that he is now not attached. Now, there is a particular individual who's trying to get on board to direct it, and that is I want to say Amber Tamlin. Now, I'm familiar with her going back to her, really her soap days. Of course, you know, Sisterhood and Traveling Pants. She's also done The Grudge, too. She's done a couple other movies, whichever. And I'm looking kind of a little intrigued at the fact that she might, you know, want to direct it. Now, the reason I say it like this is because she's putting forth her bid to see if they'll consider her or at least bring her to the table to, to possibly discuss coming aboard to direct it. Now, she posted some stuff on social media. I'm going to post it up in here where she showcased her back when she was a little kid, dressed up as Red Sonia. So, yes, so she could kind of like let people know she just playing on, you know, she shouldn't be, you know, attached to Red Sonia. Like, uh huh. It's like, you, know, you all thought I was joking when I said, you know, my love for Red Sonia. Let me show you this. Here I am, you know, in my costume, whichever. Like, yeah, she was not playing. I love me some Red Sonia. She made it abundantly clear with that. Now, secondly, some other people are like, you directing it? Mm, don't know about that. 
with her, she did her movie, and I want to title her movie that she'd made back in the day. She did a movie called, uh, recently, I think it was a 27 film called, I think, Painted, Painted Black, where she directed, she posted a picture of that, like a part of the trailer of sorts where kind of showcasing she has directed something, so it's not like if she's trying to direct it, you know, anything about having any type of skills in directing a movie, so it's doable. Thirdly, I think, um, a lot of people honestly would probably want to see a female director do Red Sonia. I will not lie. I think I would probably prefer it. But then you have to remind yourself, even if you want that, and there are female directors who are very well versed in directing. So that is doable. And then also being the fact that I know Brian Singleton has worked from the past. He's He is good at some of the stuff he has put out. So it's not like, you know, he wouldn't definitely be able to do the role. But of course, dealing with certain situations that have to do with some, you know, alleged allegations, this is what happened. So here we are again, dealing with another situation where certain things happen. And now this person has been removed from said movie. So, yeah, I just I'm just not sure how this one's going to go. I know they shelved it after we'd heard because a lot of people were not too happy with, you know, Brian Singer being attached when the stuff did come out, you know, I, I'm going to keep my eyes open for this because I've been hearing about Red Sonja off and on for the last, you know, what, couple of months, three, four, five months, you know, off and on. Just hear little small whispers, whichever. So we'll have to see how this goes. I really want it to happen. I did enjoy the first one, like I said. So I would like them to consider doing, you know, a new one, a re-imaging of one. That would be nice. So I hope Amber does get a chance to, you know, do her pitch to them and hopefully they'll consider her, you know, as, a, as an idea, you know, as an option, you know, if they have a couple of people, like, you know, a lot of movies I discuss on here, I'll tell you, they'll have like two or three different directors, you know, as you know, they're considering, you know, who they might, whatever and all that. And they're trying to, you know, pros and cons of sorts, whichever, you know, this person's working on this, this person did this, this person did this, but they only did this, you know, it is what it is. It's like a damn interview. It basically is, you know, seeing who's the best candidate, who's going to be the one that's going to, you know, come to task. So I'm going to keep my eyes on this. And when I know more, you all will know more. Now, I'm trying to hit this horror part because I really love to talk about my horror. Now, this one I'm looking forward to, and this doesn't have much longer if I have my day at the below. This comes out in June, and this has to do with Annabelle 3. Now, let me see. This one's a loaded one. Now, I'm excited for this because now we have a full title. The title for this is Annabelle Comes Home. It sounds so freaking creepy, but I'm so here for it. Annabelle Comes Home. Mm. Now, for this one, you all know I've been dealing with anything that's come out of the James Wan verse. Let's just call that the James Wan verse because he's been dealing with him with Insidious franchise, been dealing with him in the Conjuring, and of course dealing with him and his aspect of being attached to Annabelle. And of course the nun. Now, of course the first Annabelle, didn't care too much for it. I did not. I just, it was kind of slightly likely, like lesser boring. I loved Annabelle creation. I love that movie. Honestly, if it's on, I will watch that. I will have it in the backdrop, whatever I'm doing, if I'm on my laptop doing whatever. I really enjoyed the way they did it. They really took it back in regards to the origin and a little bit of understanding the story with um, the doll. And I like that. And just the way this, the, the creepy scenes were done was really good. I went to the theater to see it. And that, that audience of mine, they were riled up. There was quite a few females who could not contain themselves. It is what it is. I'm not one of those. I don't do all that extra screaming. You might get a little jump from me here and there. It was one or two jump scares that did it, whatever. But the creepiness of the doll alone still just, ugh. But I'm just so, so excited to hear for it. Now, like I said, this particular one... Um, will basically will not really deal with the Warrens being the husband and wife. We'll be dealing with the daughter. And this will be played by the daughter who's named Judy, played by the daughter McKenna Grace will be playing the lead character of the daughter in this. Now, if you all recall in one of the uh, Conjuring movies, which are, and I think in one of the um, Annabelle movies, they showed her, whichever, she's not going to be the same girl coming back. Now, this particular actress, she is picking up a lot of um, buzz because she's been in some recent things where she's getting, you know, some notoriety. She was actually in um, the Captain Marvel movie. She plays a young Carol Danvers, and I love that. And then also she was in a very good hit uh, TV series on Netflix, which was uh, Haunt Haunting of Hill House, which was really, really good. I am excited for her. This will be all encompassed dealing with her in this aspect. So that means we will not probably really see the parents at all. That will give it an extra creepy factor 
which I love. I know a lot of people don't like to watch horrors when it involves kids mostly. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm totally different. That does not phase me. If it's creepy, it's creepy. It is what it is. That's just how it is. You know, you got to have your horror and sometimes they have to put the child factor in it. It is what it's just, I just deal with it, you know? So, and it just, it just adds a little something to, it. I don't know why, but I'm just like, I'm just here for all other types of ways of doing a horror, it, whatever. So, but I'm looking forward to this. Um, this would definitely be one of those ones I'm planning to see. I did state the date will be June 28th. So it's coming out. We only have a couple, not that many months left to go. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I pray it's really creepy. I'm looking forward to seeing this. So, cause like I said, Annabelle creation definitely got me hyped again to see anything related to Annabelle. So I'm hoping they do this particular one justice like they did that one. Cause like I said, that first one, they can keep that because I did not particularly care for that. So now for speaking on the Warrens conjuring three, I'm excited for this one because now, as I can tell you all now, filming actually starts this summer. Yay. Now, if I talk about those, I liked both the first one and conjuring two. I know some people said they liked, um, conjuring one more than two. Um, I will say this since I like both of them, but if I had to choose between the two, how, how much I liked, I like the second one more. And that's what I'm looking forward to seeing how this third one is probably supposed to be the last and final one of the full trilogy of it. I'm looking forward to this now. Granted, they have not stood, stated what the actual synopsis of this particular one. We've heard little stories about this. It's going to be involved with a particular court case. And we're going to probably, I'm a feeling from there, see the scenes of how the stuff, you know, comes out in during um, the proceedings of the case in court, whatever. And then seeing maybe some flashbacks, whatever. I don't know which, much more about what's happening in overall with the overall storyline. But I remember discussing this months ago this was back in the summertime so i'm kind of glad that we're finally getting more information about this now for this particular movie i still don't have when this is supposed to come out i want to think this is coming out next year now we're having a summer because at first they were not telling me when it was actually going to start filming so since the summer i'm thinking next year and i'm thinking not next fall this is going to probably come out maybe around the same time like they're doing with annabelle it might be in april you know, March, April, May release of next year. If they're starting this summer, they have all the rest of this year. This means this is one of those ones I really feel like will probably be in production maybe three or four months and then they have the rest of this, the fall and winter to get this baby ready and a trailer to come out maybe January, December, January, somewhere in there. I could be, you know, jumping a gun. But you watch enough movies and you watch enough information about production in summer times and movies, you know, being worked on. You kind of get an idea of when you think they'll probably put it out, whatever, when they think it's the most viable to get the most money. With horror, it doesn't always matter. I know other movies, it's like they're very particular about summertime for blockbusters. So I'm definitely looking forward to this. Now, they're claiming production does start, like I said, in the summer, saying June 3rd, and it's going to start in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm definitely looking forward to... Um, Hopefully they'll find some pictures online where it shows them from the set. We'll probably see a little bit of something from that. I'm also looking forward to see who else will be cast. We already know Vera Farmiga will be back and Luke Wilson, Patrick Wilson, excuse me, my apologies. So I just ready to see who else will be in this movie. I'm looking forward to knowing more, like I said, about the synopsis. That is what I remember talking about previously. So hopefully it's still kind of similar and the same. So that will be interesting. And I'm looking forward to them saying that. So when I know more about the, the overall um, storyline, I'm going to definitely bring it up. And definitely when we'll know when it's actually coming out next year. So moving on from that. Now, this movie, I'm definitely looking forward to because I talked about this last um I want to say last fall, late last fall. Um, this has to do with a movie called The Hunt. This is through Blumhouse Pictures. This has to do, of course, uh, Jason Blum being attached to this and also the producer and writer on this, his name is Damon Lindelof. He actually has written on shows like um, The Leftovers, you know, just to, just to name one of the ones that I actually used to watch back in the day. That was on HBO, and that was a really good show. So I'm really excited and confident about this movie. Now, let me tell you, this kind of gives you an idea, because when you think about Blumhouse, you have Insidious, you have uh, Paranoid Activity, you have The Purge, all these type of things that have been, um, you know, worked on with uh, within the franchise, whichever. So I love that they keep building, building other uh, parts of the franchise with stuff that's similar to being considered a thriller, horror of sorts and all that, but kind of, you know, moving a little bit a ways away from it, but still keeping a, a, a bit of a... Um, 
feeling of that in the movie. Now for this one, let me give you the idea of the overall movie. This one has to do, the film will follow a group of characters being hunted down. Kind of like an all battle royale. It says, Lind Lindolf's script says, it describes it as a political action thriller. Interesting. It says the implications being that those who were being hunted are of a different political affiliation than those who are trying to kill them. Interesting. It's an interesting stake. Now, one thing I can say for um, Damon Lerner, when you think about some of his shows and his movies over the years, he's done, he's attached to, of course, The Hunt. He's also going to be attached to HBO's The Watchmen, which I will be watching. I love the movie, so I'm so down for the new TV show for Watchmen. He doesn't seem to shy away from dealing with stuff in aspects of politics, whatever and all. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this movie is going to really turn out. This is this is an area that can be uh, very, very interesting for talking to people just in general. A lot of people don't really want to discuss it. I don't have no problem discussing it. If I want to speak my feelings, whatever, somebody asks me to my face, I will tell you how I feel, whichever and all that. If I want to choose to continue discussing it, if we get into a discussion, but I'm like this, to each his own. I let you speak. You let me speak with it and all that. I don't like to feel, you know, when it gets into those, those, you know, tread on those muddy waters, you got to be real careful. So, but yes, this is going to be very interesting. Now, let me verify the, the casting of this because when I discussed this before, there was a particular female who had been cast in the lead on this that the time was attached to this, but now it looks like no more. This was Betty Gilpin and she was a part of the show that's on, um, it's called Glow. Now it's showing that we have some new casting that I did not know that was on here. So let me note this out. It's Emma Roberts. We have Justin Hartley. If anybody's familiar with him, he's on the show. This is us. And then we have a gentleman by the name of Glenn Howerton, who is a part of the Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm familiar with that show. So yes, that is some of the casting that has now come on board for the movie The Hunt. And I'm actually glad now we're getting a little bit more information of who else would be a part of the movie, which is really good. I don't know what capacity. If Emma is the lead now, I want to feel like she is. They probably want to go a little bit younger than uh, Betty. That is fine. Now, for Justin, I don't know if he's going to be a good guy or a bad guy. I really hope he is a bad guy who might be trying to go out and he's trying to kill the other ones. That would be nice because most of the movies I see him, he's always the good guy. I like to see him play a villain. He has not played a villain in the things that I've seen him over the years. No, no, he hasn't. So, yeah, that would be interesting. That would be nice. So... I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. That's exactly, I'll get my wish. That would be nice, you know, but if not, I'm going to still go see this movie anyway because I, I like the people that are involved and it looks like it's going to be something really, really interesting. I can't wait to see how they're going to do that trailer for this, whatever, to see if people are really feeling for that, you know, because some people might be like, oh, here goes some political. I don't know if I want to see it, whatever. Politics ain't going nowhere. Politics is here to stay. So if you don't want to see it, just don't see it, whatever and all, but I don't let that deter me, whichever. Now, this is my last and final. And this is something I've been talking about off and over the last couple of weeks, and I'm excited about it because it's something that was pertaining, of course, to the Dark Universe, but now that the Blumhouse uh, Productions has taken over this, director Leigh Whannell is attached to this, I'm excited about this, and this has to do with The Invisible Man. Now, with this particular one, we're still waiting to figure out who will be in the lead role. <laughs> for this movie that was Johnny Depp at first when it was helmed of course under the dark universe when they of course you know the mummy did not do well they kind of put everything on hold and look at dark universe and they're not going on their timetable now Blumhouse is now you know a cause you know has you know gotten the rights for the movie Leigh Whannell is going to actually be the one that's going to be directing it I think he's still going to be the writer for this the budget will be a little bit smaller I'm excited about that so they can really delve into the movie because with The Mummy, as much as I like it, as much as I like Tom Cruise, I feel like, you know, they went above and beyond Overboard, even though overall the movie was okay, but it was just something about it that did not mesh with a lot of people and that's probably why it didn't do so well. Plus, it was showing too much of it in the damn trailers and TV spots, so that's just my personal opinion, but I feel like it's facts because that's exactly what they were doing. This one, now we're starting to hear some names being dropped out. And one of those names, that's, well, two, excuse me, let me get that correct, that are being dropped out is one, Army Hammer, and the second one is being Alexander Skarsgård. Now, when those names popped up, I was like, okay, let's start with Army Hammer. Now, I already talked about him earlier, him being thrown out there for maybe doing the Batman movie and don't know how I feel about that. Now, for this one, that I don't mind. That's okay. I can foresee that. Nothing wrong with that. Now... Let me go to the other one, Alexander Skarsgård. When I tell you, now for that, that I can definitely see. I am definitely a fan. I like both these um, actors, but when I choose between the two, I like Alexander more so. He's been in a plethora of work that I loved over the last 
really the last 10 years, he's done minus some. Now, the first thing that introduced me to him was, of course, when he did True Blood. And once I caught him in that, it was a done deal because I was keeping up with him on the show because I watched the show faithfully every time it came on every week. I was just wanting to see what else he would do when, when the show was on hiatus, if he's working on a movie or whatever. So, of course, him doing movies like the Tarzan. And of course, he's on, you know, shows on HBO. I mean, the boy stays busy. I feel like something makes me think as much as I want Alexander to get it, I feel like they're going to try to give it to Army Hammer. But let me put it like this. When you read a little bit of synopsis, and I'm just going to just read how they phrase it in here for this it just says his name of course his name is adrian griffin if you all remember the old black and white he is a billionaire and also in you know honestly like a psychopath of sorts who develops an invisibility suit for the department of defense whichever now this is the thing when i think of um the psychopath aspect of it i don't get that vibe from army hammer being from some of the movies he's chosen over the years i'm just not feeling that now, for Alexander Skarsgård, he's done a couple of movies, and this, the TV show he's on right now on HBO, I'll put the picture up because my name, my mind went straightly blank with the show. It's a, really an all-female cast. Of course, Nicole Kidman plays his, his wife in the particular character he plays. And of course, we have Reese with the spoon on this show. Um, we have some other ladies. I know um, that Meryl Streep will be on this particular season. I cannot believe I cannot remember the name of the show, and I didn't note it in my own notes, but that's okay. I will make sure I put the poster of the TV show up here. But needless to say, I can foresee him because he's done a couple other movies where he plays the bad guy of sorts. So that aspect, he has that down pat. He could definitely do it, but I feel like they're going to try to lean. So these are the only two names we have so far. So either we'll have to see. But secondly, the reason why I say this for this particular movie, the way they had this set up, whatever, if these two people are able to do this. Now, it all comes back down to availability. They're both busy guys. Um... I know um, Army Hammer definitely he has some other things lined up that he's um, definitely working on some other movies that are going to be coming out soon. And I definitely know with Alexander, he's definitely working, stays working. So, like I said, definitely see which one of them is available in their schedule. Also, will a third party individual come into play as well? Because these are the only two names right now that we're hearing. But that is, lets us know the ball is moving and it's rolling. And I'm actually excited, whichever, because I know they're ready to kind of get this baby started so sometime later this year, maybe going into the fall. This movie will kind of, you know, start, you know, moving where, you know, they'll start production. And then maybe this might come out next year. That would be nice. I still don't have a date, but they're claiming that they want to go hopefully with a 2020. We'll have to see. I hope so. Um, there's so many other parts of the dark universe down the pack that I would love to. My no Blumhouse is definitely just only right now worrying about doing the visible, the visible man. So we'll see how that does well. And then who knows, maybe they'll do other ones. I would love to do a new, the wolf man, you know, the creature of the black lagoon would be really nice. Um, of course, the uh, the Bride of Frankenstein, and of course, Frankenstein. I really would still want them to do a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I would like to see them do that. I particularly did not like the way they tried to flush out the character of it by Russell Crowe in the movie, uh, The Mummy. Just, I did not like it. And the way he looked, just the CGI way, it was just like, oh my God. I mean, I would say part of his CGI, like his overall um, hands, whatever and all, looked really creepy, but the face was just so bland and just so lackluster. So I'm going to keep my um, my thoughts on hopefully they can consider doing that. But yes, again, my choice right now for the Invisible Man, I'm all for Skarsgård. I'm sorry. Sorry, Army. He has a, you know... He, no, I would prefer his scars card. So, but like I said, I can see it, whichever it's a possibility, but scars got the full package. I feel like he would definitely could do perfect in that particular role. I'm, I'm totally here for that. So I'm hoping next month or so we'll hear more information. They will say he actually snatched it up. His schedule permits him. He can do it. So I'm really here for that. So, but the one person that definitely did state to you guys who actually was attached. And I talked about this, I think two weeks ago is Elizabeth Moss. She's actually in the movie. So we have her. So now he's got to get him on him. Whoever this him will be on board and move this baby along so but that is basically it you guys definitely comment below with any of that i discuss about any of these um movies that i wanted to talk about i would love your feedback i love you all let me know how you all feel you know moving forward with any of these upcoming movies stuff that's coming out next year stuff that's coming out this year 
I love to just like, you know, have that banter with you guys in the comment section. So with that said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this movie news. I will see you guys on the next one. You guys take care.